do you think there's a benefit, potentially there's a cohort of patients who would benefit from more than six cycles? What do you think, Chris, so, of radium 2 to 3, I mean? Yes. I'd be very surprised if the current schedule is the best one. Yeah. It's, it's the only schedule that's ever been tested, yeah. and we know that it's effective, we know that it's well tolerated, but there must be scope to improve upon it considerably. And I guess one way in doing that would be to give more than six cycles. Yeah. Um, I'm, I think we know already that it's possible to deliver more than six yes. cycles safely. What we don't yet know is whether it's more effective or sure. not. Yeah. And the other obvious thing to consider is to giving a, a higher dose each time. Yeah. Um, and personally, I'm very attracted to that possibility. Mm -hmm. I suspect that if we were to give a, a higher dose of radium each time, even if only for six cycles, it would be substantially more effective. I agree, because uh, as radiation oncologists, we know that almost every tumour we treat, the more dose that you give, well, obviously to a certain optimum point, usually the better the outcomes or the less recurrences. So it, it, it stands to reason if you can get the dose in safely, the higher the dose, the better. Yes. So. And really thinking about, obviously we've spoken about docetaxel and abiraterone in the hormone sensitive space. Do you think there might be a role for radium-223 in that space? Well, obviously we don't know. Yep. It's never been tested. Yeah. But I think it's a really important question to ask. Yeah. You know, I'm very struck that both with docetaxel and with abiraterone, they seem to be considerably more effective in the hormone sensitive setting rather than the castrate refractory setting. Yeah. So will that be true of radium as well? Yeah. Now, you're doing a trial, are you not, Joe, in that situation? Yes, we're, we're doing basically a toxicity trial at the moment, looking at a combination of men with de novo metastatic prostate cancer, getting ADT and docetaxel, because that was the, basically the standard at the time we designed the trial, and then moving on to rec receiving six cycles of radium-223. Really at a point when usually the PSA has gone down to fairly low levels, you know, mm -hmm. often below one. We do a bone scan to make sure they still have active disease on bone scan, and then they have six cycles of radium-223, but they also have radical type dose radiation to their prostate and pelvic lymph nodes using VMAT radiotherapy. So try, I suppose trying to use the principle of neoadjuvant hormone therapy leading on the, as we do in locally advanced prostate cancer, a period of neoadjuvant therapy and then hitting with the radiation, trying to do the same concept with radium-223. But this study really is a toxicity trial, among other things, trying to make sure that there isn't much overlapping, overlapping toxicity, you know, potentially some bowel toxicity from the radium, along with the potential bowel toxicity from the VMAT. But I mean, I think most of the, I mean, it's been amazing to see docetaxel and abiraterone having such good effects upstream. I mean, obviously similar hazard ratios, but just it converts into something a lot better downstream. So I would hope the same with radium-223, but I think it would have to be patients with bone-dominant disease. I think it would benefit most. But yeah. I do have a clinical anecdote. Yes. So I have treated two patients, mm -hmm. only two, okay. uh, in that way. So yeah. these were guys with bone-only metastatic disease when they first presented. Yeah. And it was at a time when ADT alone was the standard of care. Yeah. So these guys got ADT plus radium. Yeah. And three or four years down the track, they both have undetectable PSAs. Yeah. For what but it's worth. You know, for people who know ADT, there is, a, uh, there is an alkaline phosphatase flare that is, it's not linked to the testosterone flare. So you see that also with the antagonist. But in the day of week following the first administration of ADT, you have intense remodeling in the bone metastases, meaning that you've got a, you increase osteoblastic activity. And that's what you want when you're giving radium. Sure. And uh, that's probably the time in a patient or in a metastatic life when you've got the most increased bone remodeling. And I, I've been very surprised that nobody used that kind of uh, opportunity where actually you give your, you give your degarics, you give whatever you want. And then if you look like two, three days after you've got a, a huge increase in alkaline phosphatase, if you do all body MRI and we did some uh, perfusion studies you show that actually you increase a little bit perfusion in the bone marrow environment. If you do a PET fluor, you're going to see an increased bone remodeling activity. And you would say, as a rational, that's the best time to put a drug that's going to go where you want it to go, meaning in the lay of hydroxy appetite where the, 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 it, it's going to go. I agree with you. We have got some preliminary data suggesting that uptake on a fluoride PET scan does predict for benefit from Which rating. makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Um, which makes me a little bit worried about your yeah. design yeah. <laughs> because you're going after docetaxel. Yes, so indeed. maybe that's a bit too late for, to, be, to right. be ideal. Perhaps so.